Good afternoon, Warriors. My name is Menza Rag from your Career Professional Development Office. It is my pleasure to introduce Norman Vita of CGI, who is hosting today's Employer Spotlight. Mr. Vita is going to share information about their organization and open opportunities. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Please keep your webcams and microphones off during the presentation. There will be a time at the end of the presentation for questions, but if you have any questions during the presentation, please add them to the chat box and we will make sure to get them answered. Thank you. Good, after, good morning. Good afternoon, Mr. Vita. How are you doing today, sir? Okay. One quick correction. It's Mr. Yes. Vite. Vite, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs> Pronounced almost like right. Um, no problem. Okay, so actually uh, today I'm going to cover a couple of things. My my goal is to educate as much as inform today. Um, I want to talk about careers. I want to talk on how you build careers, and of course, I'm going to give some information on CGI and and what's happening there. Um, let me see if I can get my, there we go. Uh, who am I? Okay, there is a quick bio. I am not going to read this to you. Um, I've been in the industry over 35 years. Uh, any role you can imagine in technology, I have probably performed that role at some time or other. Uh, these days, I am the director of the Onshore Center uh, for CGI in Belton, Texas. Uh, currently, we have about 250 people there, and we're looking to grow that to about 350, hopefully this year. Um, I'm heavily connected within the university community. I love talking to students. Uh, and as well as, you know, um, serve on some of the advisory boards for the actual, some other Texas A&M affiliates. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's talk a little bit about CGI. What, one of the things I believe is unique about CGI, and by the way, I've been there around nine years. Uh, obviously, I've done a lot of other things in my career. I will say, hands down, this is the best company I have ever worked for from a uh, mem what we call members, or you probably think more of as an employee uh, standpoint. And part of it is CGI is founded on a dream, which I have up on the screen right now. And it kind of sets the tone for the um, company and you know the 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 part in the middle is really important as owners about 90 percent of the people within CGI actually own stock in CGI and it really have an ownership mentality well what does that mean um, most of you if you've ever had an opportunity to rent a car probably do not wash and clean it before you turn it back in. Why? Because you don't own it. They'll take care of it. Whereas your own vehicle, you know, you're doing that yourself. Why? Because you own it, you take pride in it, you want it to look good. Well, the same thing translates into our environment as owners take pride in the company and really try and put into action what we call the core values, uh, which I have listed up here. Okay, let me just move on. And this kind of shows, it used to be represented as a triangle. CGI tries to balance the needs of clients, shareholders, and members through these values. And what do we mean by that? Well, shareholders is, how profitable the company is, the financial aspects of, of running a well-run business. 
Obviously, our clients are key. Uh, I'll get into some statistics about them in a minute. And the members are the, the owners and people working there. So they try and keep an equal balance. And actually, internally, we measure on all three of those areas to see how we're doing. It's a place where you can build a career. CGI is the fifth largest independent consulting uh, technology consulting company in the world. You may not have heard of us. That's not uncommon. Why? Because we're a business to business operation, not uh, in the consumer or retail spotlight uh, very much. Uh, so over 77,000 people. Uh, our clients, we have over 5,000 spread across the, the world, and we are in every single major uh, industry sector you can think of, from government to financial services, manufacturing, uh, energy and gas, utilities, and so on. Um, why is that important? It contributes to the stability of the company. Last year was a very challenging year for most companies. Uh, we barely lost a beat last year. Why? Because our business is very diverse and spread across a very wide number of clients. And by the way, we measure their satisfaction uh, rigorously and regularly on a 10-point scale our average across all 5,000 clients is in excess of 9.2 satisfaction. Why is that? One of the reasons is we have one of the highest industry records when it comes to on-time, on-budget completion of work. Um, normally, in a live setting, I would ask, what do you think the industry average is, see what people come up with. Um, since I can't do that, I'll tell you. It's about just north or south of 50% of all projects are completed on time and on budget. Over the past 10 years, CGI's percent is in the upper 90s, which is an amazing uh, record. So how do you build a career there? Well. We're looking for entrepreneurship. That's talking about your initiative, independent thinking. Uh, you'll experience that entrepreneurial spirit. Flexibility. The company works really hard to help members achieve a work-life balance and, and some level of flexibility within our structure to make that happen. And what's really unique, particularly about a a center like the Belton Center. This is a massive global company, so you've got all the resources of a global, well-established organization, yet when you work in the Belton Center, you feel like you're working for a family-owned business. They really work to localize each, each group. And some of you uh, may have seen us in the community, uh, we help in a lot of different charitable ways, as well as we're the main sponsor of Belton's 4th of July and have a history of award-winning floats. <laughs> so we do all sorts of things. Uh, we do STEM programs with the various school districts, and we're involved in a number of local organizations and boards. Okay. You know, where you're sitting, you're probably wondering, what are we looking for? You know, and and most of you may be thinking about getting a job, and I'm going to talk about that uh, and kind of draw a line between a job and a career. But what are we looking for? Well, let's cross these four areas. Intellect, what do we mean? Can you think on your feet? Um, can you grasp quickly complex or technical uh, topics? And do you show initiative on how you solve problems? 
confidence. We're looking for assured, not arrogant. You know, another aspect of, of confidence is feeling comfortable enough to ask questions when you don't know. We understand don't know. Uh, over 50% of the staff in centers across the country, and we have seven of them, were hired directly out of college. So we're, we're used to dealing with, I'm learning, I don't know, could you explain that? And do you have a drive to produce quality? Uh, communication in this day and age is essential, and the ability to have exchanges across multiple media right now, uh, most of our work is remote and it's, and it's a challenge. How do you communicate on that? How do you communicate in writing or email? And, and do you show sensitivity and empathy or respect in your communications? And then our culture is just so strong uh, a point the people who succeed in our culture are team players. They're, they have the ability to exercise give and take in, in, in whatever situation, creative and open to change. To get a perspective on change in the organization, when I started nine years ago, there were 28,000 people in CGI. And like I said earlier, there are now 77,000. And we plan to double that in the next five, five to seven years. So change is just a, a constant. And, and we're in a field where change is a constant. Okay. So given all that, what I'd like to talk about and I, and I don't think this is emphasized enough, of how you go about building a career. Is it important you get that first position? Absolutely. But how you approach the opportunity of that first position uh, really can drive what your career looks like. What does the rest of your work life look like? For some perspective, Personally, I started as a trainee without a degree a long time ago. <laughs> uh, I recognized it was a great opportunity. Uh, I drove myself to learn. And over time, I got promoted, well, actually, rather quickly. At five years, I actually was managing technical teams. Uh, at seven, eight years, I was actually an independent consultant on my own, um, and that evolved from technical to eventually project and program management, and now I'm in general management within CGI. Okay, so how, how did that happen? So... Try visualizing your career. How do you do that? You have to understand now, these are all things I'm going to go into. What are the big questions? I'm going to share what I believe is a very basic equation. We're going to talk about what areas have value. We're going to talk about how you build competency, continuous uh, stretching. Uh, then I'm going to hit another topic that you may have thought I forgot and give you a few final thoughts and then we'll open it up for questions. Okay, so let's dive in. What do I mean by understanding now? And I think this is really important. Each individual, they bring a unique set of knowledge and experience, right? Some, some education, some experience, right? And the important thing to realize, you are where you are, right? You've gotten what experience you have up to date. You've learned what you've learned to date. You are where you are. And I think within CGI and certainly as a personal philosophy, I recognize that in just recently graduated students. You are where you are. 
uh, and I have that perspective, and I know that's not where you're going to be forever. You are in control of your progression. I give you a brief overview of my career. Um, nobody did that for me. I made choices along the way, <laughs> made mistakes along the way, learning experiences, right? But ultimately, it's your personal drive, your personal desire, where you want to go that controls your progression. And from where you're sitting, the challenge sometimes is, what does that path look like? And, and how do I recognize if I'm making progress? Okay, so what are the big questions? Well, first ask yourself, where do I want to go? And by the way, for those of you who are not technical, CGI is a consulting company. Over half of the people within the organization are not technical. They perform roles such as business analyst, change management coordinator, all sorts of different end user or client focused roles. Uh, we've had great success with people with accounting degrees, finance, econ, uh, you name it. Even one of my better performers, he was a history major and a music minor. You, you wouldn't think that would work in a consulting company. But he followed a lot of what I'm, I'm going to talk about in here. and. I recognize that in him, uh, you know, in talking to him. So anyway, back back to the slide at hand. Where do I want to go? You may not have the exact answer, but you need to start asking yourself that question. Then you can start say, well, how do I get there? That's a big question. I don't understand it from where where I'm sitting. <laughs> Can I get there? You know, is this, a, is this a realistic goal? You may find that sometimes as you go through those first couple and you're trying to visualize where you're taking your career, you may be halfway through a career and realize you're already there and maybe I need to think what's the next thing. So don't get hung up on, can I get there? When do I get there? Everybody's impatient. Um, I'm going to talk about timing in a little bit. And then the big question, where is there? <laughs> um, often, you know, from uh, an entry perspective, it's just not that clear. So by observing, you know, finding people that you look up to, and we'll, we'll talk about mentors in a bit, you may see somebody and say, I want to do that when I quote unquote grow up. And that'll help you answer that last really big question. So what, what do I call the basic equation? You start where you're at. You've got no other choice. You are where you are. You know what you know. So you got to figure out some way to add to that, right? You have an intrinsic value where you're at now. So how do I make myself more valuable and move forward? So essentially, you take yourself, me, plus new value. It will lead to career progress. Okay, so. How do you get that value? A lot of people think it is purely technical. If if I'm in IT, I get that next certification. Um, I learn a new programming language and so on. If I'm not in IT, I think in terms, let's say I'm in accounting, uh, I get it. I move from just basic bookkeeping type accounting and I get my skills up where I can do more managerial 
uh, type accounting, uh, more CPA type work, and so on. Uh, each discipline tends to have its relevant set of technical skills, disciplines, knowledge. But it's broader than that. Actually, in the real world, industry knowledge is very important. Do you understand the industry you're in? Now, what's interesting in consulting, we're about in every industry. Some of our people become very specialized and actually become subject matter experts in the industry their clients are in. Uh, some, like myself, become more generalist and, and actually learn a lot of about multiple industries. So that's one area that has value. How well do you understand the industry that your company or your project operates in? Obviously, we talked about technical skills. You do have to add to those. You start at a point and you build on it. The other uh, area a lot of people don't think about that has actually fairly high value is process knowledge and skills. For instance, there is a discipline called Six Sigma. It's about process reengineering and, and figuring out ways to make uh, workflows more efficient repetitive task more efficient. There's a couple flavors of that. Uh, within the IT industry, there's some disciplines like IDL, ITIL, um, which is about effectively managing a infrastructure and software and end user environment. What What is the discipline around that? It's process knowledge. And then probably more well-known are things like project management disciplines. Uh, the PMP certification is much more around traditional project management. Uh, SAFE and SCRUM are around uh, the newer agile models, uh, but it's all understanding the process and becoming fluent in those processes. That has high value. So let's talk about industry knowledge. Where do you get it? You generally don't take a course, uh, certainly at the undergraduate level, in, let's take an example, utilities. How do electric companies operate? Not, you know, beyond, well, if I pay my bill, when I turn the light switch, the light comes on. No, how do they operate? How do they maintain that infrastructure? How do they bill? How do they, you know, uh, recover from disasters? How do they get all that stuff in one place? A uh, bad storm comes through and there's tremendous amount of coordination on how do you get the replacement poles or, or towers out there? How do you get the right technical people that know how to fix that? How do you get the bucket trucks you need or whatever it is you need? Uh, how do you get a transformer out of a depot? So there's a lot of coordination. There's a lot of things happen behind the scene in any industry. Uh, financial services, which I spent a large part of my career uh, you know, uh, a house mortgage, how does that operate? Well, there's a whole lot happens between you make an application for a loan and that house is paid off. What are all that is underlying processes? That's industry knowledge. Where do you get it? Industry journals, not particularly exciting reading. But you know, when I was in financial services, I read The American Banker. I tried to stay on top of trends. Uh, that's just an example. There are tons of industry journals for any industry you can imagine. IBIS, it tracks trends in industries by sector. Uh, those are out there. You can uh, Google IBIS and it will take 
take you to a place where you can then uh, select an industry and dive in. What's happening now? What's projected to happen? White papers. A lot of organizations, ours included, uh, consulting type organization, they issue white papers. What are they? They're details about, for instance, where an industry is trending, why it's trending there. Um, those are available out there. There's some massive studies available out there. Okay, technical skills. Well, how do I prove them? Primarily on the job. Repetition is your friend. Um, the, the more you exercise a technical skill, generally, uh, the stronger it will be, and plus you will tend to be uh, exposed to um, tech, technical subjects outside of the area you already know. In our organization, Skillport, this was a, an internal uh, system for CGI. Uh, it's since been replaced by something we call academia, but it's self-paced learning. Uh, I received one of my certifications by setting up uh, some online um, coursework for myself that I completed and then uh, tested for the certification. YouTube. <laughs> I wish this was around early in my career. It's a wonderful sor source of how do you do things about almost any subject you can imagine. Uh, and if you're in a very technical role, tech forums and blogs are another good source of expanding your technical skills and knowledge. Okay, process skills. I, I talked about idle. Uh, all these are about studying those process skills. Idle was one of the, uh, the ones I did self-study. Uh, PMP, which is project management, Six Sigma, which is all the process re-engineering and the various belt levels, and SAFE is a industrial scale method of uh, implementing Agile. Those are just some examples, and then and then get certified. It adds to your value. Okay. Want to talk a little bit about the cycle of competency, and this has a whole lot with where you're at and where you start. You really start at, I need to be told what to do. What do you want me to do? Now that you've told me that, and I kind of get that, I still need to be told in many cases as I'm learning new skills how to do it. I still have to be told how to do it. I understand what it is now, but I'm not quite there on the how to. So the next level of, of competency is when really you begin to know how to do, and maybe they're just simple tasks, but you know how to do them without constantly having to uh, ask or, or question. As you evolve from that, you begin to understand why do I do whatever that is. And that's a whole whole different level of absorbing a skill. And it's the essential part to moving over to the next level of competency is actually I know what to do next. I don't have to be told what to do, how to do it. Now that that I understand why to do it, why I do it, and I practice that over time, I begin to do what I need to know what I need to do next. And when I complete that cycle at whatever level or, or specific skill that is, I've gone through this cycle of competency and I'm ready to push to that next thing that I need to be told what to do, how to do learn why I do it until I know what to do next. This next part is really important. Um, 
early in my career, I took on stuff that I had no business taking on, given where I was at. Um, I took on many early projects. Um, I was, I actually designed and ran the first team in the United States to have a PC talk to a mainframe in real time for a commercial application. Nobody knew how to do it or had done it at that point. I took on that task. I took on many side jobs just so I could learn the, the technology. There are many projects I volunteered for. I'll guarantee you I went home, asked my wife, what was I thinking? Why did I volunteer to do this? And then slugged through it until I understood and got it done. What is that? Well, it's continuous stretching. You know, you just, you've got to scale down, but I've, I've got to increase my value. So I, I go outside of that. I stretch and stretch. And before long, I'm someplace I didn't imagine I would be as far as competency and skills. Once again, back to the new me, or the me plus new value. And lo and behold, this start to make career progress. I'm no longer a junior programmer. I'm a senior programmer. I'm a designer. I'm an architect. Oh my, now I'm actually doing strategic planning for technology and so on. So how does that look and how can you visualize what that process is? I like to think of it as a box, okay? This is now. It's my current com comfort zone. It's what I know. It's what I've done. I have experience with. That little box is my comfort zone, okay? And we all have one. Um, and maybe when you start your first position out of school, that box isn't very big once you, you get that first position. You realize your comfort zone is pretty small. That's okay. Uh, going back to what I said earlier, you are where you are. That's, that's the reality. So how do I move from that? I take a stretch. I, I start to learn a new industry. I start to learn a new technology. Um, what do I like to call that? You notice now the, they're sitting on either side of my comfort zone. It's a zone of discomfort. I don't know this stuff well enough yet. I am uncomfortable. By the way, if you're uncomfortable with the task at hand, probably means you're growing, All right? I've, I've got to have some level of it to feel like I'm making progress in my career. So you'll, you'll experience that zone of discomfort. And then you take another stretch. Why do you do that? Well, guess what? What was uncomfortable before, you've done it enough, your box is bigger. Your comfort zone is bigger. So now I need to push those boundaries again. Find that next level of, hmm, I don't quite know this, but I'm going to figure it out. I will get this done. I will learn it. I will get comfortable. So what's happening from a value and from a career? Each stretch, I broaden my base of knowledge and experience, right? So that definitely adds value. Well, the other thing that happens, because some of that box represents things I in my comfort zone, but I've now done them quite a lot. I have deepened my experience. Not only am I competent in my comfort, uh, comfort zone. I become very competent in my comfort zone through repetition. I, I said it before, repetition is your friend. It's all right to be uncomfortable. And you do it the second time, whatever it is we're, we're referring to, you're a little less uncomfortable. And over time, the repetition, you oh, 
oh, I've got this. All of a sudden, it's now part of your comfort zone. And your career is progressing because you're adding new value. And this happens over time, right? This is not overnight. A career is a long-term endeavor. It is not get through the next semester. It is not get through the next class. It is a long-term endeavor. So consciously, at least personally, I had to constantly go for my own stretch areas. You know, whether it be volunteer to do a project in a language that nobody had worked in before, a technology that nobody had used before. I did a lot of that. And it was interesting over time, that actually became my reputation and became self-fulfilling in the organizations I worked for. I started getting that kind of work. It's like Norm can figure this out. Hey, we got something we're we're uncomfortable with. Give it to Norm, and that just kind of accelerated uh, my whole uh, career pro progression. Okay, one thing a lot of people thought should have been in my areas of knowledge was people skills. Okay, and I call it the unaddressed dimension because they didn't put it in there. Right. It, industry knowledge, technical uh, knowledge, process and uh, uh, process knowledge. People skills are a different ball game. They do not, they do respond to stretching, but they're, they're very seldom learned in a book way. Okay, why? Because most people's skills are experiential. You develop them because you experience something. You need it to work on your people's skills so that the next time you experienced it, you did better, right? Um, for instance, uh, well, there's a a lot of books and stuff out there about conflict resolution, okay? You can't be good at that unless you've experienced some conflict. And actually, you can't be really good at it unless you've failed at it a couple times to kind of learn your lessons and have that experience of what worked for you and what didn't work, right? And along those lines, your development of people skills is very situational. If you are in an organization that has very little conflict, you probably will not be great at developing conflict resolution skills, right? If you haven't had an opportunity or raised your hand to do a junior leadership type role, you haven't been in this situation yet to start working on leadership skills. You know, and those, and you can't always control the timing of this stuff. It, a lot of it just happens. Okay, a, a couple final thoughts, and then I am more than happy to open it wide open for any question uh, you can think of. Some rules of the road. Be curious, always. You don't stop learning when you graduate. You've just started. There's always something to learn. Ask, listen, and that's how you learn, and you will learn. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know. Can you tell me? In fact, one of the things when I was an independent consultant that my clients liked a lot about my approach, if they asked me something and I didn't know, I would tell them I didn't know. Now, I might also add at the end of that, I will find out and I will get back to you, but I didn't make stuff up. It's all right not to know. Nobody knows everything. Find mentors. 
my career was driven because I found people who I wanted to be when I grew up. And that changed over time. I've had a number of mentors in my career. About mentors, find somebody you admire. Find somebody who knows something you would like to know. Find somebody who's in a position you would like to be in someday and find out how they got there. Um, ask for mentorship. Most people are hesitant to ask. It turns out having been on both sides of this coin, mentee and mentor, trust me, a mentor gets a lot of satisfaction out of watching somebody grow their career. They really do. Um, it is an honor to be asked. Uh, if somebody shows the interest and, and wants to learn, I am more than happy to help. And the same thing in my career, I found people that either knew something I didn't know, did some things a whole lot better than I did, and I watched them, I asked them, I asked for coaching, um, and I received it. I've never had trouble finding a mentor. Um, you just have to look. Okay, at this point, uh, I'll open it up to questions and um, turn it over for that. Great, great presentations, Mr. Wright. Great presentation. I got that. I got your name correct this time, right? Excellent. See, ask, right. listen, and learn. <laughs> Thank you, sir. A uh, few questions for you. Can you, uh, what is your organization's occupational snapshot at the moment? What do you mean by occupational snapshot? That's a more complex question than the you you may know uh employment opportunities okay like i said half of our people are non-technical uh in the belton center we're hoping to grow hopefully 100 people this this calendar year what kind of people um Business analyst, what does that person do? Well, they might review um, requirements that a client has and document them. They might create job aids, um, testers, um, running scripts, uh, the test of validity of the systems that are, are being implemented, um, managing the whole defect process and resolution. Um, that has become quite a, a professional path. Uh, there's opportunities there to become more technical. Uh, a lot of testing these days is also automated. Uh, so people who know how to automate and implement that kind of testing are in high demand. Uh, we're almost always looking for that. Um, developers. And because we're a consulting company, we are pretty much uh, technology agnostic. Um, in fact, let me switch to sharing my video. Uh, is this just now my video? No, sir. Yeah, I'd like to... Um, instead of have, having that up there. Okay, um, okay. So developers, any any technology, our clients use everything you can think of from mainframes to modern technology. Uh, DevOps, which is automation of, of the delivery of, of code to production. Um, Project managers, we're looking for project managers. There are junior roles available that start out more in a project coordinator, uh, assisting project managers, but learning the skills necessary to ultimately become project managers. Um, 
heavy systems oriented um, administrators, people who have interest in uh, the cloud, uh, system administration, um, networks. If, if it happens in IT, CGI is doing it someplace, period. Uh, there are uh, no areas that um, we're not in. Uh, and actually, within the Belton Center itself, I talked earlier about industries, 10 major industry segments. We're in seven of the 10 in the Belton Center. I have teams doing work, some kind of work, in seven of those 10 industries. And I have people doing everything from, from testing user support on up through project management, uh, development, architecture, all in Belton. <clears throat> I don't know if that answers your question, but really in an organization like ours, uh, it's a little, it's a little hard to narrow it down. <laughs> yes, sir. That you, you answered it. You answered it great. Thank you. I have a question here. Okay. Are there any professional orgs that you can recommend to students who are interested in interested in networking with? Okay, so I'm not sure which organizations are on your campus. Um, ACM, um, uh, that is a, a good organization. Um, actually, any special interest organization. Uh, a, a tip for whoever asked that question. Um, when I I've I have literally over the na last nine years, because my involvement in college recruiting uh, as part of my responsibility. I have talked to thousands, literally thousands, of getting ready to graduate um, students. What sets some of them apart? One, they're easier to talk to, and I, I get being nervous talking to somebody <laughs> like myself that's been around for a while. But they're easy to talk through. And when I look at their resume, I see organizational involvement. But it doesn't matter what. You know, I've seen people were on uh, a fraternity's float committee. They were the chair. Well, that shows they took initiative to do something. I've seen students uh, in charitable stuff. I've seen students do Habitat for Humanity outside of their studies. Um, ver various social and professional organizations on campus. They were the secretary, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they chaired an event. All of that shows me initiative. And that jumps out. It, re it really does. And, and sometimes, by the way, it trumps a high grade point. There. There are some people with very high GPAs that aren't a good fit for our organization. They may not have that team player uh, attitude, um, you know. So we're, we're really looking for a more rounded individual. So join whatever organizations are your passion, you know. Um, because that will drive you to be a contributing member of that organization. I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't be a, a little more specific, but there's so many out there. Okay, and, okay, that, that's, that's great. I have another question for you. Sure. What are the top marketable skills that CGI is looking for when reviewing candidates? Okay, um, if we were to go back 
quite a few slides. We're looking for the aptitude to learn skills. Okay, I really don't care if, let's say you're technical, because so, it's sometimes easier uh, to name those skills. Let's say you have significant Java programming in your coursework, or .NET programming, um, or some Python scripting. It doesn't matter what you've shown is that you can learn a technical skill, because the reality is what we need changes constantly. I have people working on technologies or languages, technical skills that didn't exist five years ago. So your your what you're marketing is your ability to learn a technical skill at at the level we're talking about coming out of school. The ability to learn a technical skill, show some passion for what you learn, and be able to explain to me if I ask how something works. And I'd, I'd accept any follow-on question to that because that probably doesn't feel like a complete answer. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Thank you. This was a great presentation. Do we have any more questions out there? To anyone that's that's viewing the the live presentation right now. Let's see, we have no more questions. That was a great, great presentation. Thank you so much for participating in our spotlight event today. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I always enjoy doing this. I always enjoy engaging with your campus. I think you've got some wonderful programs running out there and we look forward to talking to a number of your students this semester. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye everyone. All right.